Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to install Notepad++. But before I get started with that, uh, let's talk about what Notepad++ is. It is a text editor, uh, so you can use it to help you write code more efficiently. Uh, that's a pretty short explanation, pretty reasonable. Uh, my right arm is in a sling, so I'm going to be doing all kinds of tricks over the next couple weeks, like a lot, of, a lot of copying and pasting. So I was just at a Google search, and I more or less typed in Notepad++. Technically, I pasted it because I can't type with my right hand. So a uh, quick Google search yields uh, the first result. Have a look at that URL pretty quickly. It's so notepad-plus-plus.org. That's where you want to go to download this tool. I really like Notepad++ because it's very lightweight, very easy to install. Kind of my gold standard for easy to install is that I can put it on a flash drive. So notice I clicked on download. I'm going to click on this big old download button again. I'm going to save this file. Notice that was almost an instantaneous download. I'm going to go view my downloads folder. I have two of them. I just did this a minute ago. I recorded the wrong screen. That was a lot of fun. I'm going to double click that. Click run. It's, this is not real. It's not an elaborate process. Uh, if you might notice these, these, my I go off the screen for a second. It's because I've got two screens and everything always pops up on the other screen. I'll click OK. Drag that thing over. Next. I agree. Uh, here I'm going to send it over to my flash drive. You're probably going to install it on C. I like to put things on my flash drive. One, just to prove how not difficult it is to install these programs. Two, I really like having a development of environment on my flash drive, uh, probably because I'm an instructor, and so I do some of my work in the classroom, I do some of it in my office, I do some of it at home, and it's really cool to have everything just be able to run on a flash drive. Anyways, I'm going to put it on my flash drive. I'm going to click Next next install and you'll notice this will probably take about 15 seconds maybe at the most so here we are two minutes in i have sat here just kind of talking about what we're doing a little bit in general and uh, i was able to get it installed in right i could have done that in one minute if i wanted to i'm sure so notice what opens up is this just kind of i don't know right it's talking about patches fixes um uh, let me show you some things let me open up a file so sorry give me a give me a second here uh, here's a good one. All right, so I opened up a file. It's a PHP file. Notice that there's some red, there's some blue, there's some gray, there's some black. That's one of my favorite things about Notepad++, and it's really not unique to Notepad++. It's called syntax highlighting. There's some stuff that's just content like this, and um, there's other things that are keywords. All right, so what you can kind of see going on here is it looks like uh, the PHP code, um, like that PHP is red. That's a PHP keyword. It's blue. Um, show you some other things. Just in theory, like let's say I had a, a curly brace. You notice I typed one curly brace and it automatically completed it for me. That's kind of nice. I imagine that you probably haven't done a lot of programming if you're watching a, a how to install Notepad++ video. So that's called, well, that is, that's auto-completion. Auto-completion is pretty helpful. It can be kind of annoying. Uh, what I wanted to show you was uh, this thing called parenthesis matching. So as you get into programming, you'll end up with just, right, you'll end up with in situations like, you know, parentheses inside of parentheses, curly braces inside of curly braces, like that. Uh, and it gets hard to keep track of them. What when it what starts where, what ends where. Well, I'll show you if you click on a curly brace. Do you see how that one turned red and that one turned red? So that's called parenthesis matching. So it works for curly braces, any kind of brackets that you're using. Very very helpful in the long run. So just that and that syntax highlighting, right? Like it's recognizing that oh this is kind of sort. It realizes that that is a uh, that's an HTML tag. I just want to show you, if I have a typo like that, notice that it's not blue anymore. Right? And so that's where syntax highlighting comes into play. If you think you're using a keyword, but it doesn't get recognized, then you probably made a mistake. Notice I fix it, now it's good. I also want to show you that when I click on that body tag, do you see how it uh, highlights both of them? The idea of when you've got a container tag, or, or much like a parenthesis, when there's one, there ha the, an opening one has to have a closing one. It does that little highlighting for you. And so sometimes you might make a silly mistake like misspell that closing body tag or maybe you just forget it altogether. You can use this uh, 
this matching to notice that, hey, that thing should match and it doesn't. But when I fix this, it does, right? So maybe you can kind of see what's happening there. Like I said, if you're new to programming, which you probably are if you're watching this video, you probably don't have a lot of appreciation for that. But as you start to do more complicated programs, that's a great help, right? Like sometimes you realize I forgot to close something. Sometimes that's a good way to um, spot a mistake. Let me show you a couple configuration-ish things that I think are useful to see. One is up here. So, well, it's not a great example, but if you go to language, um, this is PHP right now, and so it's being highlighted accordingly. If you did HTML, it would be highlighted accordingly. Let's say this is C code, right? Let's just pretend this is C. Notice that now pretty much nothing is highlighted except the, the angle uh, brackets and the curly braces. It's because basically none of that is valid C code. So when you change your language, you're basically defining like what keywords should be uh, colored. So now I go PHP and when I do PHP, PHP kind of being the complicated thing that it is, it highlights all my PHP stuff and my HTML stuff. So generally that language selection is important, but one thing I do want to show you is that just quite simply that file extension, when you save something as .html or .whatever, uh, it knows that that is the language that you're using. Couple other things, just just kind of basics. One of the things that I do sometimes is I go into settings, and sometimes I go to style configurator, and then you if you head into here, one that I use in class a lot is like Blackboard. Right? I don't know if you like that better or not. Notice the color scheme has changed. You might find something that works for you. This one works well for a projector, as you could probably imagine. Uh, another thing that I just want to point out is that uh, so Notepad plus plus is is known as kind of a basic uh, text editor. It's, it's highly functional. You can make it more powerful uh, if you head into the preferences. I'm no expert at this, but like I'll just show you some things. For example, in auto-completion, the reason that, that when I type one curly brace that it completed it for me is because that box was checked. You can check, you can add things, you can remove things. You should know that Notepad++ can be pretty powerful if you want it to be, but by default it's it's kind of basic, and personally, I like to keep it basic. Uh, I think there's a lot to learn by not having auto-completion trying to finish every sentence for you. So uh, I like to just kind of leave it as it is, with the exception of maybe changing the color scheme. So that's Notepad++. I really like it because it's easy to install. It's free. Uh, kind of gives you everything you need and uh, nothing really above that by default. So this is a tool that I use a lot, regardless of the language that I'm writing. There are heavier weight ones out there. There's all kinds of pay tools out there. But uh, if you're running Windows, this is, a, this is an excellent place to start. Good learning tool because it's not overbearing. So hopefully you understand now how to install Notepad++ as well as why you might do it and uh, some of its basic uses. Thanks for watching.